Land Rover Monthly is Britain's fastest growing Land Rover magazine. Each issue is packed with features on driving, modifying, maintaining, exploring and buying Land Rovers. Discover more at landrovermonthly.co.uk Hello, I'm Peter Vaughan and today in a field in the West Country I have a motorhome, a campervan like no other. This is the Duckworth Overland Aurochs. Not, as you might think, the strange love child of a Land Rover and an Airstream caravan, but the brainchild of two men, Tom Duckworth and Michael Gerrard. They have worked tirelessly over two years to develop this vehicle, which is now on sale. The pair started with a conventional Land Rover, a Defender 110 with the TD5 engine. And that has been utterly and completely renovated. Galvanised chassis, etc. So designed not only to be restored, but for a long life ahead. It's got LED headlights too, and air suspension with self-leveling so you can get exactly a, a level pitch, even on a field like this. It's a two and a half litre lump, um, producing a, around 130 horsepower, which should be plenty for a vehicle with a gross weight of just over three tonnes, 3,050 kilo to be precise. And the vehicle weighs about 2.4 tonne unladen. But whilst clearly a lot of work has gone into making this Land Rover 130 as good as it could ever be, the real interest, of course, is in this one-of-a-kind body. It took, as I say, two years of development. Everything was hand-formed on a wooden buck, using an English wheel to create these compound curves. Each one of these panels in the Luton area took two days to make. And it's like an Airstream or a classic aircraft in this riveted construction with 55 mil aluminium ribs inside, then a plastic layer as a thermal block and bamboo lined on the inside. Clearly this vehicle is going to appeal to a more adventurous type of campervanner with these chunky off-road wheels and of course the Land Rover base vehicle. It should be able to go, well, pretty much anywhere. Well, obviously it doesn't look like a motorhome in the normal way. Every panel, in fact, is either a radius or an ellipse, so it can all be made in traditional style. And Tom is particularly proud and particularly passionate about the truly handmade construction of this vehicle, all those panels made on an English wheel. And there's hardly anything sort of standard motorhome-y about it, not even the door handle, although the true anoraks might spot a Dometic S7 double glazed window or even perhaps the Thule electric step at the door. But everything else, just look at it, it is a thing of beauty, isn't it? Following it on the road here, um, well, you couldn't mistake it for anything else. In the far distance, there's just a hint of Airstream caravan and then you realise it's not a caravan, it's a motorhome and a unique one at that. Size-wise, it's quite deceptive. 5.42 metres long is small by motorhome standards, but big by Land Rover camper standards. Think of those old car wagons and dormobiles which were really confined inside. And this offers a lot more, of course. 2.74 metres high, just two metres wide. So, yeah, it's a compact vehicle, but also a lot bigger than your normal Land Rover camper. Now, one of the features of having the air suspension is not just for improved ride quality, but when you park up, even in a field, you can get nice and level automatically. Now, it would 
be a massive disappointment if you came in to such an otherworldly motorhome and inside it looked just like any other. But come into this Aurochs and it looks nothing like any other motorhome that you'll know. They're bead and cove panels that fit together like in a cedar strip canoe and they give a wonderfully warm and cosy feel inside. Like a sort of cross between a sauna and a yacht, I suppose. The upholstery is a mix of real leather and Harris tweed, and that's carried into the cab as well. But if you were to order an Orox, you can have whatever you like. You can change the wood, you can change the fabrics, you can even change the layout. But then this is a very special and very bespoke vehicle. There's certainly no shortage of space in this particular layout for two people to put their feet up and really relax and enjoy a view, hopefully, of, I don't know, a Moroccan desert or something, something more exotic than this Wiltshire field. The dining, everything's hidden away. Your table leg is under. The tabletop itself is hidden behind the near side backrests in the curve of the body. And it's a hefty table because, like the kitchen worktops, it's solid oak. And Duckworth Overland not only aim to source everything they can in the UK, but the wood actually comes very local to their factory. And then at night the table does the familiar thing of becoming your bed base. Along with two more panels, kept behind a similar door to the one that hides the table over on the opposite side. And then in time-honoured fashion, the backrests slot into the middle and create a bed 1.82 metres long by 1.57 metres wide at the head end just narrowing slightly where the body of the vehicle curves towards the rear. Of course if there's no wildlife that's likely to eat you and I don't think there is in Wiltshire then you could even sleep with the panorama fully open. Of course, there's some useful storage under the settees too, including this area under the centre seat. Under here is your Eberspacher Airtronic Diesel Blown Air Heating. And neatly concealed under the near side settee is an Outwell portable toilet. There's no toilet or shower in this vehicle because it just isn't big enough. But equally, there's no gas. Everything on board is electric or diesel in the case of the heating system. In here under this useful worktop by the door are all the Victron electrics. So you've got a 200 amp hour lithium leisure battery in there and a 3000 watt inverter. On top of that you've got literally on top of the vehicle 222 watts of solar panels. So then when it comes to the kitchen it's an induction hob just like you'd have at home. And the fridge is a 57 litre compressor unit from Dometic. Just about the only more motorhome familiar item in this vehicle. As I say, all the worktops are nice solid wood. Everything else is either wood or aluminium. Look at this detailing here. Looks like something out of an aircraft. You've got storage in terms of this large drawer. That will be fully carpeted inside over the Luton area, you've got a large locker for your bedding and then more storage in this unit at the side. Again, that'll be fully carpeted. 
if you're wondering about these rather stylish aluminium vents, they're for the Truma Saphir air conditioning unit, which is also a secondary heater. Even the kitchen sink comes with a solid wood cover and is not your typical motorhome fitting. I believe that comes from America. It's fed by an 85 litre underfloor fresh water tank plus 15 litres from a boiler that takes heat from the engine. But perhaps my favourite detail inside are these switches by the door. Your water pump lights up when it's on. The water level gauge is only on when you flick the switch. You've got light switches at the top. Sadly, no ejector seat, no smoke screen and nowhere to drop missiles. Driving the Aurochs, you can only be in a Land Rover. Just look at that view out over the angular bonnet as we drive across this field. I'll say hello to the sheep. But then it's not just a Land Rover because it's been brought into the luxury feel of the rest of the vehicle with this Harris Tweed on the dashboard, leather on the seats, and this wooden steering wheel. You also got a bit of tech in here with this JVC head unit that is also your reversing camera. But anybody that's a Land Rover fan will feel right at home straight away. So, if you like Land Rovers, if you like things that are really handmade, you've probably fallen in love with this Land Rover Aurochs. If you want one, you could buy this one for £250,000 or you could order one bespoke to your build, your colour scheme, your interior, your choice of woods, etc, etc, for £350,000. More exciting still is that there is further development coming on the Ibex chassis, six-wheel drive, and that will be a larger body of a similar style construction similar pricing but four berths and with a shower and toilet on board. I can't wait to see that one. Land Rover Monthly is Britain's fastest growing Land Rover magazine. Each issue is packed with features on driving, modifying, maintaining, exploring and buying Land Rovers. Discover more at landrovermonthly.co.uk